are waging war for results. We are waging war for your victory. We are waging war for who you are to come forth. We are waging war that you are going to register testimonies. We are waging war that you live the life that God wanted you to live. Whatever is written in the books of God concerning you, that is what we are demanding. Hello, shalom there, our viewers. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in at this midnight hour. I want to thank God for you that you are found to be in God's presence at this time. And those of you who've been logging in from yesterday, I believe that you are able to understand the reason why it is very important for you even to pray at midnight. And so today we're just going to go into prayer because I know that there are lives that are going to be turned around in this time in Jesus' name. And so I just want to encourage all of you who are watching me on Facebook, you're watching me on YouTube, make sure that you share this prayer time to somebody, share it to a group. People need to hear, people need to pray. There are destinies that are in danger if we are not going to pray. There are things that are not going to happen because nobody is going to pray. I want you to remember that our God is a God of love. He loved us. That is why he sent his only begotten son to die for you and me. And so everything has been done for us. But you need to understand we have an enemy whose work who's working to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal and kill and destroy what has already been done at the cross. That is why it's important for you to understand it is your work for you to enforce the verdict of the cross. So when we pray at midnight, when we do warfare, it is not that we are saying it is not done. No, we know it has been done by Jesus 2,000 years ago. It was done at the cross. But uh, we have the responsibility even to enforce the verdict of the cross. How do we do that? By declaring that my healing cannot be taken away. I cannot walk in sicknesses because Jesus died for me. I cannot walk in bondage because Jesus died for me. I I cannot have a curse operating in my life. Why? Because he was made a curse for me. That is how you yeah, enforce the verdict of the cross. And so we're going to be praying. So please, those of you watching me on television, I want you to put on the whole armor of God. We're going to pray. And today I'm going to be dealing with the powers of witchcraft. This wickedness of witchcraft has to come to an end. One of the areas where the church has basically uh, totally, you know, a big percentage of the church people. They don't believe and they don't think that witchcraft exists. But let me tell you something. Most of the backwardness we are suffering, it is because of witchcraft. Most of the things that we are seeing in our society, it is because of the servants of Satan called witches and sorcerers that are in our community, in our churches. These are servants of Satan who are anointed by evil anointing of the devil, even to destroy the work of God in the face of the earth. I want you to understand that Satan has got his own agents. He's got his own recruitees. He's got those who he gives a mandate to execute his evil command on the face of the earth. And some of these people are the witches and the sorcerers. And that is why God is so clear in his word and he says, do not suffer a witch to live because God understood. That is why God said that they should not live because God knew these are servants of Satan whose work is to destroy what God wants done. But I came to declare in the name of Jesus Christ, today you are coming out of any witchcraft that has been sent to you. Today you are getting free. Today you are getting loose. Today whatever cause you are suffering, because the witch spoke a spell against your life, is going to be broken today in the name of Jesus. So I want you to share. I want you to share. Somebody has to be free. Somebody has to be free. Somebody has to be free. And so I'm dealing with this book even as we pray today. And we are dealing with the curse of witchcraft. I want you to understand what witches do. They release curses. They release curses. They pronounce curses. Again, as people of God, whether they are born again or they are not born again, what witches do, they release curses. What they do, they release spell. What they do, they stand against your destiny and they declare it cannot be the way God wants it to be. But you know what? Our God is able. He's given us power. He's given us authority. It just depends on how we are dealing with that authority. And today, we are declaring the curse of witchcraft in your life must be broken today. Shenta labo se kalaba. I want you to know that many destinies have been destroyed because of powers of witchcraft. There are so many people roaming around. They don't, you know, they don't have a job. They don't have a future. They're just roaming. They don't have anything to do. They have no tomorrow. You know, this is not just normal. 
These are not as a result of economical setbacks. No. Most of these people, including you, I'm talking to you, most of these people, it is because of the witchcraft operating in their lives. Satan will specialize in ruining destinies. Why? Because everybody has got a beautiful and powerful destiny in God. That is why the word says, the plans I have for you, the plans I have for you, they are good. They are not to harm you. They are to give you a hope and a future. And how many people today don't have hope? How many people today are suffering without a future? How many people today cannot say what's going to happen tomorrow because they can't see it? So witchcraft has destroyed the destinies of many. I know you're watching me and you're thinking, I used to have so much hope in life. I knew by this age of my life, I'm going to be so great. I'm going to be used of God. I'm going to be a millionaire. I would have my house. I would have my family. But right now, if you look at your life, all the things you definitely knew that would have happened by now, they have not happened. And you think it is normal. It is not normal. It is witchcraft. And possibly you're asking me, Pastor Joyce, how can it be witchcraft? I don't have anybody bewitching me. Let me tell you, there are different angles on where witchcraft can attack you from. If you look at the New Testament, you remember this case of Simeon the sorcerer. Simeon the sorcerer was a witch who had bewitched Samaria. You may not have a witch bewitching you directly. You may not have somebody fighting you with witchcraft directly. But you could be in an area that has been bewitched. Simeon the sorcerer was bewitching Samaria. And as a result of that, the people of Samaria were sick. The people of Samaria were not working in hell until Philip got into Samaria, and people were healed. And Simeon also realized that there is another power. So I want you to understand when we're talking about witchcraft, you need to have an open mind. You need to understand some of this witchcraft could also be in your blood, in your foundation. Some of you may not have visited a witch. You don't even have any connection with witchcraft. But you know, have to understand that generations before you, there could have been people who visited witchcraft. And I just want to explain to you something that happened some years ago uh, in South Africa. I, I got a call by one pastor. He's a man of God who actually uh, has a church, a, 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 a well-established church. And so he called me and said to me, Pastor Joyce, I want you to pray for one of our leaders here. She is an intercessor and God has blessed her in intercession. She is a prayer warrior. But as you're talking now, Pastor Joyce, she is in the hospital and she's not, able, she's not getting any better and the doctors are giving giving her hours. Now, she, uh, he said to me, please pray because we have prayed all we can and we are not being able to get answers. She is getting worse and worse. And so I told her, it's okay, man of God, I'm going to pray about it. When I went to pray, God revealed to me that this girl, this intercessor, this prayer warrior who is in the hospital, her parents had visited witch doctors. And as a result of that, that is why this girl is an attack because a door of witchcraft was open. I called the pastor and I told the pastor, I have prayed and this is what I have seen. That that girl parent went to a witch doctor and because of that, because of that wickedness, a door was open even for the devil to invade in, in this family. And you know what the pastor told me? He told me, Pastor Joyce, I believe you're very wrong. Because as you can see, we are not black people. Because, you know, according to them, they believe only black people have got witchcraft. And so he told me, you can tell we are not black people. So we don't have witchcraft in our community. We don't practice witchcraft. And so it can't be. Again, Pastor Joyce, the parents of this girl, they are born again. So I don't see how it can be that the parents who are born again have been born again for many years that they could have visited witch witches. Arori okay, men of God, no problem. Let us keep praying. And that was it. But then after that call, this man of God, this pastor, decided to call the parents of this girl and just ask them if they have got anything to do with witchcraft. And so he called them and he asked them and he said to them, uh, I just spoke to a man of God, a woman of God, and uh, she told me that God has shown her that you had visited witches 
in your life. And you know what the surprise was? These parents of this girl, they told these men of God that when they were young, though they were not black, but for a reason, their respectful parents took them to witch doctors for protection. And so they got all those, you know, all those bands that are put on, on children uh, for protection. You know, those things you put on the neck, you know, those things you put on the waist, you know, those bands for protection from witch doctors. So they were apparently protected. But remember, they are not black. But somehow, their parents, who by this time were already dead, took them to witches. And so when this pastor got this information, he was very shocked. But obviously, uh, he called me back and he told me, you know what, Pastor Joyce, I apologize. I've been able to speak to the parents of the girl. And they are saying that as, uh, at some time, when they were young, they were taken to witches for protection. And so what do we do? So I told him it is okay. Now we are just going to pray. We're just going to repent because of this iniquity. And our God is a God of mercy. We are going to plead the mercies of God. And this judgment, this thing is going to be averted. And that is what we did. And you know what? In two, in less than three days, this girl was out of the hospital. The girl was totally healed. She's alive today, serving God powerfully. Now, now that example I was giving you, it is so that you understand sometimes you may not be able to really trace where the witchcraft is coming from. But if you look at your life, you can tell something is very, very wrong. I also want you to understand witchcraft could also be the words that people speak to you. Words that are not normal words, they are full of evil power. People can tell you you will never succeed. People can tell you you will never get another husband as good as I am. Just because you have separated or gone through a divorce. People can tell you you are going to amount to nothing. Now that is not just words. These are words that are very demonic and satanic. They are full of evil power. So that is witchcraft. That is a witchcraft spell. People can tell you you'll never get married. People can tell you you'll never be able to handle money. People can tell you your business will not succeed. And you think it's just playing with words. No, this is evil words. And that is why the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter number 21 and verses number 15. And now give you a mouth and wisdom of which your adversaries will never be able to resist or gain shape. In other words, you have been given a mouth to be able to counterattack what the devil have said against you. Or people that the devil used to say against you. God has given you a mouth. So as we pray at this specific town, time. I want you to use your mouth. You're not just going to sit there and watch me the way you would watch a program. No, I want you to get involved in this. You know what happened to you. You know what was said to you. You may not even know all those things, but when you look at your life, you can tell something is very, very wrong. Maybe you're dreaming eating. That is a sign of witchcraft. Maybe you're dreaming being chased by animals. That is a sign of witchcraft. Maybe you are dreaming, you know, snakes in your family or just dealing with snakes. That is a sign of witchcraft. So I want you to understand that witchcraft can come from any dimension. Witchcraft can come from any dimension. There is a lot of people, a young people, men and women, who have died prematurely because of witchcraft. People die because of witchcraft. Because remember, the work of the devil is to steal, kill, and destroy. So the enemy will pursue you with witchcraft until you have been terminated from the face of the earth. And some of you, you've been prone to accident. You're just walking in a very nice road. All of a sudden, you just twist and break your ankle. Have you ever seen things like that? You just eat normal food that everybody ate in the wedding and everybody else was okay, but you got food poison. You landed in a hospital. That is a sign something is very wrong with you because you're doing things normal people do, but for you, you get very unusual demonic results. Now, there is so many people who are supposed to be seated in front, people who are supposed to be very far, but because of witchcraft, they are suffering today. They are hustlers today. These are signs of witchcraft because witchcraft will never allow you to move forward. When you're dealing with witchcraft, you can never handle wealth. When you're dealing with witchcraft, you can never handle power. When you're dealing with witchcraft, you can never really walk in anointing. There are so many ministries, and let me say this again. The number one opposer of a church or a man of God or a woman of God, it is witchcraft. Remember, these are servants of Satan planted in communities the way me and you are planted by God in our communities.
So before you can plant a church, before you can grow a church, before you can succeed in your calling and your anointing, you have to deal with witchcraft. Remember the interest of God is the people in the community. The interest of Satan is the people in the community. So here there is a battle of kingdoms. These are battles of kingdoms. This is altar versus altar. This is priest versus priest. This is sacrifice versus sacrifice. So man of God, woman of God, as you raise a, uh, an altar for God, you need to deal with witchcraft in the area. Because if you don't do that, you are not going to see breakthrough. You are going to, you know, to suffer. You are going to pray day in, day out. You're wondering why is it so hard to establish a ministry? And so I want you to remember these things are so real. Those of you who are coming online, God bless you so much. Even as you keep on coming online, there are communities that are so backward. You look at a community and you're wondering, why is this community so backward? Why is it that in this community, in this specific area, nobody gets educated, nobody goes anywhere in life? I want you to remember it could be witchcraft. So you don't rule witchcraft out. You don't rule witchcraft out. There could be a witch in that place. When you look at the places we live today, we interact today, there are so many areas that witchcraft has penetrated. If you look at schools, if you look at institutions, universities, if you look at government, if you look at media, if you look at judiciary, if you look at the business world, all these are areas that the enemy has in infiltrated with witchcraft. And that is why as a child of God, you really have to arise. And so I want you to join me even as we pray. I want you to join me even as we pray because we are going to silence these powers today once and for all. And we are going to pray that every power of witchcraft in my life shall die in the name of Jesus, shall expire in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray this prayer point with me. I want you to say, my father, my father, as I pray today, every power of witchcraft in my life, I command it to expire. I command to expire every power of witchcraft in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command it to expire. My father, my father, I pray for my viewers right now, and I pray against each and every power of witchcraft operating in their lives, operating in their family, operating in their career, operating in their businesses, uh, operating in their churches, operating in their calling, every power of witchcraft that is in existence in their life. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command this power to expire. I command the power of witchcraft uh, to expire in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, every trace of witchcraft in your life as an individual, as a family, as a church, uh, I command this power to expire by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Uh, I nullify, I nullify, I nullify every spell of witchcraft. Uh, I nullify every power of witchcraft. Uh, I nullify every witchcraft saying against your life, against your destiny, against your marriage, against your children. In the name of Jesus. Whatever represents witchcraft in your life, Holy Ghost fire, locate it now, locate it now, locate it now. Whatever. Whatever looks like witchcraft in your life, whatever signifies witchcraft in your life, whatever signifies witchcraft in your finances, whatever signifies witchcraft in your marriage, whatever signifies witchcraft in your dreams, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, locate it now, locate it now, locate it now. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of judgment. I release the power of God to locate every trace of witchcraft in your life. I command these traces to be terminated by the power of Holy Ghost fire. I release judgment against every trace of witchcraft in your life by Holy Ghost fire. I release judgment by Holy Ghost fire. I release judgment against every witchcraft in your life. Your life in the mighty name of Jesus. 
every curse of witchcraft that is in operation in your life. Most of you, you are dealing with a curse of witchcraft. Repazika, because somebody released a curse for you. You know what the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter number 12 and verses number 3. God said unto Abraham, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. Now, I want you to remember God understood from the word go. There are people who are meant to bless. There are people whose job is to curse. Now, every curse of witchcraft that has ever been released in your life, in your family, I break it in the name of Jesus. I break every curse of witchcraft by Jesus becoming a curse. For you, I break every existing curse of witchcraft. I break every existing curse of witchcraft in your life in the mighty name of the Lord. I break the curse of witchcraft in your life. I break the curse of witchcraft in your life. I break it by the power of the cross. I break it. Jesus became a curse for you. You cannot operate under a curse. You cannot operate under a curse. Every curse, wherever it has come from, I return it back to sender. I return it back to sender. I return it back to sender. Right now, every force of witchcraft operating in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I scatter it by fire. Every force of witchcraft in your finances, in your career, every force of witchcraft present in your life, I scatter it by fire. I scatter it by fire. I scatter it by fire. I lose you from those forces. Every river. A witchcraft flowing in your life right now. I break her that flow. I break her that flow. I break her that flow. Some of you, you keep on dreaming, eating. You keep on dreaming, eat, uh, eating and drinking stuff in the dream. And you keep on praying, but it keeps on happening. Today you dream eating meat. Tomorrow you dream eating something else. Tomorrow you dream something else, maybe drinking something. The river of witchcraft, you know, you are constantly under attack of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ today, by the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ, by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus became a curse, today in the name of Jesus Christ, I break the flow of the river of witchcraft in your life. I break the flow. I break the flow. I break the flow. I break the flow. I frustrate the plan of the devil of witchcraft in your life in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Bible says in the book of Exodus 22 and verses number 18, do not suffer a witch to live. You shall not suffer a witch to live. That is Exodus 22 and verses number 18. I am going to be praying a prayer of mercy, a prayer of no mercy. I'm going to be praying a prayer of no mercy. And I know most of you are so religious. You keep praying for your witches to repent. My friend, God says, do not suffer a witch to live. And therefore today in the name of Jesus Christ, I am terminating the lives of witches. There are people who are servants of Satan. No matter how you pray, they will never give their lives to God. Because they will never get any Holy Spirit conviction. Because they have covenanted with Satan. Because they have been ordained in the priesthood of Satan. Because they are so far in the kingdom of darkness. They actually. There are people actually that the devil has raised, that the devil has seen to the, from their conception that they belong to him. So when it comes to this, we pray a prayer of no mercy. You kill them before they kill you. You destroy them before they destroy you. You scatter them before they scatter your business. You release judgment before they put a spell and before they put you in the grave. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for my viewers today. Any witch bewitching them, any witch bewitching them from wherever they are, wherever they were born from, wherever they work, wherever they do business, any witch, any witch 
in the radius of their, wherever they are, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release judgment by death. 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 Anyone that has bewitched you and now you are sick, now you are treating sickness you cannot even understand. Every witch that has bewitched you and your business is not flourishing and you're not getting married. Anyone that has bewitched you and you cannot sleep because of all the evil dreams in the name of Jesus Christ. I release a verdict of death in the name of Jesus Christ as it is in the word of God. I release death. I release death. I release death. Judgment by death. I command every witch in your life to die, to die, to die, to die. To die. The Bible says in the book of Micah, chapter number 5 and verses number 12 and 13, that is in the book of Micah 5, 12 and 13 says, and I will cut off witchcraft." Out of thine hand, and you shall have no more to say us. Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing image out of the midst of them, and you shall have on, on no on more worship the work of thy hand. In other words, you shall no longer worship the work of your hands. Let me just read that again. And I will cut off witchcraft out of your hand, and you shall have no more to say us. Your graven images also will I cut off and your standing image out of the midst of them and you shall have no more worship of your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. God have said that I will cut off witchcraft in the name of the Lord right now. I take authority and power and I cut off every witch. I cut off every witchcraft. I cut off every sorcerer. I cut off every soothsayer. I cut off each and every astrologer. I cut off each and every diviner. I cut off, cut off each and every body there is in the kingdom of witchcraft, in the kingdom of darkness, as a servant of Satan, as a priest of Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, every priest of darkness, right now in the name of the Lord, I cut off your witchcraft, I cut off your activities, I make it impossible for them to consult their images. I, I make it impossible for them to operate and, and, and be able to bewitch people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break their mirrors. I break their mirrors. I break their mirrors. I break their graven images. I break the graven images. I break her. I send the blood of Jesus in their evil altars and I send fire. I send fire. Wherever your name is on the altars of witchcraft, I withdraw your name. I withdraw your business. I withdraw your family. I withdraw your health from altars of witches in the name of the living God. And I replace your name with fire. I afflict her every witch. I afflict her every witch. I afflict her every witch that has been bewitching you with irrevocable madness. Irrevocable madness. Irrevocable madness. Irrevocable madness. I release irrevocable madness to the witch that have caused your marriage to be broken. To the witch that wants you dead. I release irrevocable madness. Repose if you have never experienced the work of witchcraft in your life, you may never understand this kind of prayer. But if you know what witchcraft have done, I know there are some of you, those of you watching on Facebook, those of you watching on television, if you can be kind enough to comment and let some people realize that this is serious. There is people who don't know witchcraft is there. There is people who think it is a joke. There are towns you can visit and you find witchcraft is being sold in the market. The way you go to buy tomatoes, that is how witchcraft is sold. It is that serious. It is sad there is the people in the church who do not believe there is witchcraft and yet you're suffering. Even that not believing, even that not having knowledge, it is already mind bewitchment. Mind bewitchment. But I release you in the name of the Lord. Rempori bashikeda na kozete. Nazaka bileta na kuzabi. Hamboka balania na kusta labha. Hepelikota yanta labo. I want now, as I finish, to deal with the witchcraft in your community. Because some of you, it, can, it may not be. Somebody has bewitched you directly. But you are in an area where there is witchcraft. You have rented a shop 
where somebody who was witching witch, was using witchcraft was before. And so there is an altar there of evil, an altar of witchcraft. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I destroy the works. I destroy the works of Simon the sorcerer in your area. In the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are as a family, wherever you are as a church, wherever you are as a community, any Simon the sorcerer in that area, I bind them with fetters of fire and I kill them with a death, with a judgment of death. I kill them now. I kill them now. Every Simeon the sorcerer, la copa dade, la cozica labo. Every witch that the devil has established in a community, in a city, in the name of Jesus Christ, I frustrate their work. I frustrate their work. I lose the people. I lose the people from this witchcraft. I lose the people from this witchcraft. I lose the people from the activities of witchcraft in the name of Jesus. I decree from today, you are going to see victory. I decree from today, you are going to see success. I decree from today, you are going to rise up and pray. Some of you are bewitched that you cannot pray. There is an altar of witchcraft in your family. And you're not being able to pray. There are two evil altars that causes people not to be able to pray, to wage war, to fast, and to sacrifice. I will repeat that again. There are two specific major altars. There are many, but two specific major altars that causes people not to pray, not to fast, and not to sacrifice. These are the altar of witchcraft. And the next one is the altar of worship of These two altars, they will finish your destiny. That is why God said unto Gideon, I want you, first of all, to go back and destroy the altars of your father. Because, Gideon, I can't use you with this thing that, that is on you. So, destinies cannot progress because there is an altar of witchcraft in your family. And so, I pray for you that God will give you spiritual illumination, that you're going to understand your life. May God be able to show you today. I pray today that you're going to have a dream, a vision, or whichever way God chooses to speak to you, or a scripture that is going to point to you what is your problem. What is your problem? I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. We are waging war for results. We are waging war for your victory. We are waging war for who you are to come forth. We are waging war that you are going to register testimonies. We are waging war that you live the life that God wanted you to live. Whatever is written in the books of God concerning you, that is what we are demanding.